Welcome to Trucking with Fitz. Today, today we're gonna pick up our FLD. And I am excited. I hope you're excited. Stay tuned for some trucking. We are back here at the shop. And uh, we're gonna, we're here because we're gonna pick up the truck later on the night, but we need to pay. And then we need to take back this rental truck. So the truck's done with what I asked him to fix. So I'm gonna park right next to it here. And uh, I'll swap over all my stuff in a second. FOD is right there. She's coming home. Sorry to just jump back on here now. It is, man, it's hour and a half later. We, <laughs> I started the truck up in order to um, uh, just, just run it and get it warmed up and see if it was running smoother. And I was gonna transfer all my stuff over. Um, you know what, I'm gonna get on the road and we'll chat while we're on the road here. Get rolling. Um, and I noticed that the fan, the engine fan was, was staying on. It, it, it'll, it should run for a second and then turn it off. Um, but it would just, it was just staying on. I'm like, that's weird. So I, I, I jumped to the cab and I'm gonna figure this out. Trying to look at the temperature. Obviously it's not gonna be hot. I don't know, I was just looking at anything. And I noticed that there was a check engine light on. And um, so, I mean, obviously they just were working on it. So I'm like, uh, can we, what's going on here? I mean, seemed like it was related I don't know that it was necessarily related but um, some of you guys are techs probably maybe I don't know at least understand um, what's going on and it was it was saying that a five pin uh, sensor was coming up short and so apparently you gotta go through the whole list of all the sensors in the harness that are five pin. And you have to go over, you know, the sequence of unplugging them to see which one is bad. And Bryce, he, he unplugged all of them and none of them, okay. None of them did anything. And so we were baffled, like, what is going on? And we ended up pl unplugging another one of the sensors. Um, it was the manifold pressure. And it would go, the code would go inactive for a second and then come back on. Um, you know, we kept on messing with things, but eventually we came back and we pinpointed on that because that was the only thing that changed something. And uh, we noticed it had a little bit of a loop in it and we tracked it back and it went to that Pitts Pittsburgh power box. And he figured out how it was looped in there and we unplugged the box and and plugged the sensors back in the way they were stock supposed to be, and the code went away. <laughs> so that that box is fried. How it happened, we don't know. That could be, potentially be all of the problem that I've been experiencing. Potentially, that box could be the reason for the shake. If it was running rough, if it wasn't getting accurate readings to the ECM, could have been. Could have been no 
Josh, I have not called Pittsburgh Power to ask questions yet. I really should. Uh, we should have a conversation about that box. Not like I'm going to give them a hard time for the box. I don't It doesn't. Things fail. Um, it's just, I'll, I'll find out tomorrow when I'm hauling with it whether or not this was the issue. It was the issue of the check engine light. The question is, was that box causing other problems? If it was, that would be a huge blessing. Uh, you know, if I really want extra horsepower, I'll go have somebody tune it. I'm not going to plug that box back up. Now, I, obviously, I'm going to have less power, but whatever. Back to the stock, 450. It's not the end of the world. Not the end of the world at all. But it's 7 o'clock now on the dot, and we're headed down to Altoona. We're going to go drive. Man. <laughs> Bobtail trucks are very rough. Anyway, um, we're going to drop off this truck and get the Suburban and come back to my truck. And we're going to take it for its test drive. It's the first test drive after all this. And we will see if it's running rough, rough or not. It's hard for me to tell now because it's been a while since I've heard it run with the way it's supposed to. Um, but as I drive it, I'm sure I'll be able to tell. So, I just wanted to give you guys an update. I didn't record any of that because, it, I mean, I was, it wasn't me doing the work. It was the shop. I don't want to stick a camera in his face. I don't know that he would have had a problem with it, but I didn't need to do that. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys go. We'll probably talk a little bit when we get down to uh, Altoona, and then we'll go back up the the angle. Okay. She's dropped off. Got the key in the drop box. Hopefully, we don't need her again for a long time. That's what I'm hoping for. In the meantime, ooh, what's this guy doing? Where is he going? Sweet truck. I don't know where he's headed. If he's turning there or what is he, what is he doing? Okay. Yeah, he's turning. I'll poke over here. Check out those clouds. Okay. If you're wondering, we're in Altoona, Iowa, right next to the Flying J, right next to the Blue Beacon. And that's where the international dealer is in my area. Which is where I rented my truck. O'Halloran International. Yeah, look at those clouds. Man, they're moving away from me though, so that's nice. But they're still there. Now I can't remember the name of the company. That's terrible. The Chicken Place. Not Chick-fil-A. I gotta think about this. What is it called? I'll forget it. <laughs> I'm contemplating going to get some food. But I know I shouldn't because my wife has food for me at home. It's just taking longer to get back to that food. Anyway, let's get to the FLD. Okay, we made it up the angle. It's starting to get dark outside. And uh, we're gonna get the FLD. So glad to see it. You can see her over there in the distance waiting for me. I gotta leave my Suburban there for a day or so. Bless me. Bless me again. I decided where I'm gonna park it, probably right behind it. Yeah, that's where we'll put it. 
right in the mud right behind it. That'll be fine. All right. Picked up the truck last night and I uh, didn't really finish showing you guys the truck. Um, I should probably show you what I had done. So we're gonna just show you a view of the cab here and then I'm gonna pop the hood and show you uh, a couple things I had done. It wasn't very much, but it was something. Okay, what did I have done? You can see a new harmonic balancer. And yes, it is a cat one. It isn't a, a fluid one. I didn't even really look into it. I just went genuine can, cat. And it's fine. Didn't change anything. Another thing I had changed was its fuel line that goes from here to uh, to the tank. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, probably see the new fuel line down there. That's all I had done. Um, I mentioned it was this box that was causing problems. You got this, uh, your manifold pressure sensor, and then this, this um, connects to it, and this side goes, this side right here goes to the ECM, but it has a little loop here in line. So we can send it to that box. The box was causing the code and shorting everything out. So, as you can see, it's not plugged in. We're back to stock 450. That's perfectly fine. Let's get this closed. Glad I got that stuff done. It didn't help the shake, but it needed done. So it is what it is. Oh, next pl next thing to do is is injectors. So I'm gonna do a whole new set. And uh, last video, I asked you guys who I should go with, and overwhelmingly PDI. So uh, that's probably what we're gonna do. Get a set of PDI flow matched injectors, and I think. We'll solve our problem. Six new injectors and a thorough uh, overhead adjustment. And uh, we should be good after that. So thanks for watching me pick up the truck today. Uh, most of the, the footage was done in the old truck, but I'm, I'm glad to be out of that. I was, I was, I was ready. I was ready. So thanks for watching. Comment down below, subscribe to the channel. Hit the thumbs up button. We'll see you on the next one.